Hi, I'm Dr. Russ Vanderweld. The goal of this video is to make your day of surgery as smooth as possible. Today we're going to cover pain management, wound care, your exercises, and the use of either a sling or a brace. I hope you find this information useful and uh, good luck with your upcoming procedure. On the day of your procedure, you'll have another chance to have your questions answered by your physician. And if you can think of anything else between now and then, just go ahead and make a list of those questions and we'll get them answered before we go ahead with your procedure. On the day of the procedure, you will also have both the surgical site and the type of procedure confirmed and the site of the surgery will be marked with a permanent marker. This should give you confidence that the correct site, the correct extremity, and the correct procedure will be performed. The final issue is that the anesthesia team will meet with you on the day of surgery to talk about your options for anesthesia as well as the risks. For many of the procedures that are performed as outpatient, surgical blocks will be an option and we would strongly encourage you to consider this if it is an option for your procedure as it would greatly decrease the requirements for anesthesia. It would also facilitate your post-operative pain management and help speed up your recovery time. For the surgical procedure, there are often three separate medications that are used to provide adequate pain control. One is a long-acting medicine, one is a short-acting rapid onset medication, and the third is a potentiator medicine that helps increase the potency of the other medications. MS Contin is the most common long-acting medicine. It's easiest to think of MS Contin as a 12-hour pain pill. To avoid lapses in your pain control, it's best to take this on a pretty regular 12-hour interval or as close to a 12-hour schedule as you can accomplish. Even though pain management is our number one priority, it can be a lot more convenient, especially if you're having a surgical block, to take the first dose of pain medication a little bit later in the evening. For example, if you're someone who gets up at 8 o'clock in the morning and you have a block that's providing adequate pain control, delaying the first dose of the long-acting narcotic or MS content until 8 in the evening would make the 12-hour interval 8 in the morning, which is much more convenient. But if your block is wearing off and you're not getting adequate pain control, we encourage you to take that first dose earlier. As an example, if you took the first dose at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you'd then have to take a 4 a.m. dose, which is obviously less convenient in the first few days after your surgery. So to clarify, pain management is the number one priority. And if your block is wearing off and you're not getting good pain control, then convenience has to take a back seat. If your block is working well, we recommend that you try and delay the first dose of the long-acting medicine to a p.m. hour. That would be much more convenient for the next 12-hour dose in the morning, and this would help facilitate convenience of dosing. The second medication that we will have you use is the more rapid-onset fast-acting medication. This is usually either Percocet or Hydrocodone. These medications can be taken on a 4-hour interval and are best to be thought of as a 4-hour medicine. You can take either one or two hydrocodone or one or two Percocet every four hours as needed to control your pain on top of the MS Contin. The third medication we are going to recommend is a medicine called Benadryl or diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine is an antihistamine and has no pain medication effect or pain control effect on its own. Benadryl is a potentiator that makes whatever narcotic that's in your system more potent. It will make whatever morphine that's in your system approximately 30% more potent or whatever Percocet or Hydrocodone that's in your system more potent. It's best to think of Benadryl as being a 6-hour medicine because it can be taken on 6-hour intervals. It does not need to be taken at the same time as morphine or Percocet or Hydrocodone. However, you have to have Percocet, Hydrocodone, or morphine in your system for Benadryl to have a pain-alleviating effect. So to clarify, you will have a long-acting medication, most commonly MS Contin. You will have a short-acting medication, commonly Percocet or Hydrocodone, that is dosed every four hours. And finally, you will have a potentiator of diphenhydramine or Benadryl, which can be taken every six hours. And with this combination, we are usually able to provide adequate pain control and at least take the edge off of your post-operative pain and facilitate an early recovery. Most times after your surgery, your wound will be covered with a bulky dressing. This bulky dressing, in the case of a shoulder, will be held on by foam tape. 
and in the case of a knee, will be held on by a compression wrapping. After 48 hours, we recommend that you remove the dressing and that the arthroscopy portals, which are the small incisions, be covered with a band-aid. If you have any larger incisions, we recommend that these be covered with a dry gauze and tape. When your incisions are dry and there is no drainage for 24 hours, at that point, it becomes safe for you to shower. Now to clarify, you will change the dressings at 48 hours, but we would like you to wait 24 hours after that dressing changed to ensure that you don't have any drainage from the incision areas before you shower. When you do shower, we recommend that you avoid immersion in the water like going into a regular bath or hot tub. It's okay for shower water to hit the incision area, but we would like you to just dab things dry with a towel not aggressively rub or scrub the area, and then after each shower, reapply a new set of band-aids over the incision and a new gauze over any larger incision areas. The signs of an infection would include redness, fever or chills, or any kind of drainage other than clear liquid, clear yellow fluid or blood. Clear yellow fluid or blood are very common after arthroscopy and should not be a concern. If you have any fever, chills or drainage that appear to be purulent, thick, yellow or pus, we should hear from you, that way we can address this before it becomes a bigger issue. Ice can be a very potent natural anti-inflammatory and should be thought of as being one of your biggest tools for post-operative pain management and a way to easily and safely decrease swelling and pain. Icing can be difficult and the commercially available gel packs or pumps can be a big tool to help with that. If you find you don't have commercially available gel packs, Unpopped popcorn can be a very safe and easy alternative. We do recommend that you use a thin pillowcase or small absorbent thin layer to prevent condensation in the area of the surgical incision. By doing this, you can also provide a thin layer to avoid frostbite. After your surgery, we would recommend that you sleep in a semi-reclined position very similar to sitting in a lounge chair at a beach. A lazy boy or recliner is a good way to accomplish this position. It provides support to the shoulder. It puts you in a position where you are elevated to decrease swelling and it can be very beneficial to facilitate sleep for the first several weeks after your surgery. If you don't have access to a lazy boy or an easy chair, then we recommend that you prop yourself up on the couch using the edge of the couch to protect and cradle the shoulder as well as pillows to obtain that kind of beach chair or lounge position. At your last clinic appointment, you'll be provided with a sheet of post-operative exercises. It's important that you review these before your surgery so you're familiar with them and can perform them during the post-operative recovery. The first exercise is simply moving your hand in a squeezing motion. It is often facilitated by use of a tennis ball or a foam ball that can be incorporated into your sling. By working on early range of motion, you decrease swelling increase the circulation of the extremity and will facilitate both your post-operative pain management and your early recovery. The other exercises are to be started the morning after surgery and these include a dangling pendulum exercise or Codman's pendulum exercise. The Codman's pendulum exercise is performed by bending at the waist and removing the sling to allow your arm to dangle. We find it most useful to think about drawing circles on the ground by swinging your arm and using the momentum of the arm rather than muscle contraction to achieve a circular motion. We recommend doing this three times a day, 10 rotations in each direction to provide shoulder motion to decrease stiffness without stressing your surgical repair area. The second exercise is commonly called the table walk or an active forward flexion exercise. This also is performed with your arm out of the sling. It is usually best to sit next to a table and with your operative extremity on the table, you can both pull the arm forward and push your body back to facilitate forward flexion or bringing your arm into an overhead position. The goal of this table walk is to place your ear on the table, but this will be difficult to accomplish early on. This goal often takes two weeks to accomplish. And more than anything, what we want to see is that each day you make a little bit of progress so that you're getting closer and closer to achieving the overhand position of your arm with the table walk exercise. With your shoulder surgery, you will be given one of two different sling options. One is called a simple sling, which is a Velcro strap that goes across the shoulder and attaches to a cradle that supports the arm. 
This sling will be required while your block resolves. Once your block resolves, you should feel free to loosen and reposition the arm and in most cases, this sling is recommended for a period of 10 to 14 days after surgery and is gradually discontinued. The second type of sling is called a Remedy 2 sling. The Remedy 2 sling incorporates a small pillow attached to a waist strap and in some larger individuals, a second strap over the top of the shoulder. This provides a more secure form of immobilization. Like the regular sling, this sling is worn full-time until you start your post-operative exercises. At that point, the sling can be removed to do your exercises and can also be removed to shower. We recommend that you allow your arm to hang at your side while you shower and that the arm be dried. You get back into the sling and then pat the incision areas dry and then change the band-aids as part of your post-operative showering routine. Hello again. Uh, we hope this video smooths your day of surgery experience. As your day of surgery approaches, I hope you'll keep a list of questions. And remember, the only bad question is the one that you forget to ask. Thank you for allowing us to participate in your care.